Getting paid via direct deposit is convenient, especially when dealing with Medicaid or an MCO. Um, and when you're receiving those checks worth tens of thousands of dollars, um, it, it just makes a lot of sense. But what about getting paid via direct deposit is convenient, especially when dealing with Medicaid or an MCO and when you're receiving checks worth tens of thousands of dollars. But what about doing direct deposits when you're dealing with your residents and their families? Mm -hmm. We're going to get in that, into that in today's video. Hi everybody, I'm Brandon Gustafson. I own and operate two assisted living facilities and I created this channel to help people like you learn the ins and outs of investing in assisted living. Welcome to Assisted Living Investing. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In our last video, we talked about what is ACH, uh, just kind of giving an overview of what ACH is and how it works. If you wanna learn more about that, go ahead and watch that video. Today, we're gonna to get into, should you set up direct payments for your residents in an assisted living facility? Uh, it's one of the big questions. So the first question is, can you set up direct deposit for your residents and their families? And the answer is is yes. Um, in, a, in a previous video, I, we talked about the secret of, of how Medicaid payments work in assisted living. And from that video, you know that you also get paid uh, by the residents when you're dealing with Medicaid. Um, so go ahead and watch that video. I'll reference it up above. Um, but in a private pay facility, you're going to be only getting paid by residents. So you'll need to be getting monthly checks from your residents, regardless of the type of facility. If you're a private pay or a Medicaid facility, you're going to be getting paid by the resident, their family, their payee. Um, that money is going to be coming in to you. Um, with so many payments coming in, doing direct deposit might be something that you should look into, um, especially for added convenience uh, to your residents, uh, to their families, and you know it gives you some extra security. You're, you're not um, carrying around 10, 15 checks worth $2,000, or you're not relying on, a, on your administrator to do that. It just, it goes into your account, it's there, uh, a little bit more secure. secure. Most banks um, are going to have a direct deposit option for you. Um, they'll have mobile deposit. Um, they'll have something that you could set up an ACH payment so that people could do those, those payments on there as well. Um, so they're, you're going to find that there's a lot of those types of options with different bank accounts um, to directly deposit those funds into the bank account for you. So yes, you can set up direct deposit for your residents and their families. So that's good to know. Good to know. The, the, the next question, though, is should you set up direct deposit for your residents and their families? That's a big question, right? Um, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. So we're going to get into that a little bit right now. Um, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And there are some key conveniences for doing direct deposits into your resident, uh, for the residents and their families, their payees. Uh, but there's also going to be fees associated with that service sometimes. So that's something you want to talk to your bank about and figure out what types of fees you might encounter if you wanted to set up direct deposit uh, for, for them to submit those payments to you. Um, for us, we found that it just didn't make sense for us to do it. Um, the fee was around $20 per transaction at, at our bank for doing that. And it was just a little too much for us to handle at this point. And we talked to some of the residents and their families and they weren't willing to swallow that cost either. And so we just kind of came to the agreement. Um, you know, if, if we had all of our residents wanting to do it, we'd figure out something that would allow us to do it. There were only a couple of them that were interested in it. So we decided, you know, it, it's too much for us. Nobody else wants to pay it. We're just going to keep going forward with the, with the current process that we have. Uh, so in our situation, we didn't do it. You can look at it with your, your bank, with top, have conversations with your residents, um, decide if you're going to have a fee associated with direct deposit. Um, even if the bank doesn't do it, uh, it might be a way for you to get a little bit of additional income and those types of things. So uh, that's kind of how we handled it. Um, I, I would think if you wanted to do something like that, you would term it as a convenience fee for um, direct deposits, um, whether or not you're passing that fee along to the resident or you're, you're just doing a convenience fee for setting up that direct deposit. Um, you know, but from us, as we were going through that process, we got a pretty definitive no from, from our residents. 
situation might be different though, <laughs> as in most cases. So um, you you might be okay eating that fee yourself. Uh, you might have really high private pay residents that expect that type of a service. And so you probably should should have that type of, of option for them to make their payments. Uh, your residents and payees, they might be okay paying the fee. And your bank might not even have a fee. So you just wanna make sure you're having conversations, figure out exactly if there are fees, how you're gonna handle those fees, what it's gonna look like, um, and then from there you can make a decision on how you wanna move forward. Just take time to figure out your options and then make your decision based on your circumstances. The best information I can give you um, for how you should handle that, should you allow direct deposit for your residents. What about private pay facilities? I mentioned this just briefly above, but a big part of the reason why um, we decided not to go with our direct deposits is, you know, for our residents, the, the fee that was associated was just a little too much. We're a Medicaid facility, we're small, um, our margins are a little bit tight, so we can't swallow that. Our residents are, I mean, they're on Medicaid, so they just don't have a ton of income, and, and so they don't have the ability to pay those types of fees. And so people just weren't willing to, to do a premium. That's why we decided not to at ours. But if you're a high-end premium private pay facility, um, then you may want to look at this option. You know, your residents, their families, they may consider, they may just want that type of an option. Um, it, it is something that just is an added perk that you can use to advertise for your residents to bring people in. Um, you can advertise that. Uh, it, it might be something that they expect, um, that they anticipate. So you just kind of want to look at your, your market, um, who your residents are, and figure out what's going to be best for them uh, before you make that decision. Um, you know, a way that you could advertise that if you are saying, you know, we're, we're, we accept automatic payments or something like this, you could say something along the lines of no fee, monthly direct deposit, direct payments to simplify your billing process. You could put something like that on your website. Uh, one thing to note though, if you do this, is that payments from your residents and their payees can fluctuate based off of the amount of care that you are providing to the residents. Um, so, you know, they come into the facility and they're pretty self-sufficient. Um, they came from an independent living facility and they can do a lot of stuff by themselves. And six months to 12 months down the line, they now need a lot of assistance. Um, and you would write into your contract with the resident that um, they have to pay you based on the amount of care that you're providing them. As you increase your care, um, you're going to charge them more money for the amount of work that you're having to do. And so if you're setting up this type of a direct deposit, make sure this is clear to your residents that um, that monthly fee is going to fluctuate based on the care that you provide to your residents. So you just wanna make sure everything is clear there that it may not be the exact same amount. You know, Say you're charging $3,200 a month for your resident when they first come in and all of a sudden they need a whole lot more care um, and now you've gotta charge them $3,500 a month. Um, just let them know it's not going to be the exact same amount. It is going to be dependent on the care that they need. Um, you want to make sure that you're communicating that to them so it doesn't come a surprise or become an issue. But having that conversation up front is going to just benefit you in the long run um, as you're kind of getting that set up. So just want to make sure that, that you're clear on that and how that process would work. Uh, make sure you comment down below if you have questions about that and, and what that would look like. Uh, next time, we're going to be talking about small business bank fees to be aware of. Um, so I've talked a lot about using um, some of these, you know, getting a getting a good local business, a good local bank to kind of help you out with things. Um, but there are going to be fees involved and you can take that into consideration as you're going through it. So I'm going to get into that a little bit in our next video. To learn more about investing in assisted living, make sure you visit me on assistedlivinginvesting.net. I have free content up there. You can set up a consulting call, free resources as well. And then follow me on all my other social media platforms. And just remember, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Keep going step by step by step. Keep making progress. If you do that, I promise you, you will be successful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.